Well, it looks like there's more bad news coming out from the Eurozone. Collapsing housing spending, exports and manufacturing sucked the life out of Eurozone's economy in the final months of 2011. The EU said on Tuesday, showing the scope of the downturn looks set to become a fully-fledged recession. Now, what that might mean is more stimulus, you know. They're switching from austerity to stimulus. That's what that may mean. But initially, uh, overnight, this took a major toll on commodities. And I'm thinking it's going to continue downward further. I don't know. It might. So I'm getting out of palladium, copper, and silver for now. For now. Because if I could pick them up cheaper, I'm going to get out of it. Because I think it's going further down. Because this news is enough bearish now. There was a few other things. Saw the primary manufacturing index slip on, um, what is it, what is it, uh, for February 28th, 2012. Also, the Baltic Dry Index was about the lowest it was, well, it was the lowest it was in 26 years. That tells you a lot about the global economy. For reality, you know, and actually, you know, I'm feeling a little confident because I'm thinking things are going up. They've been going up. Well, I'm the little voice in the back of my head, which is Mark Faber, is saying, yeah, we could be in for a little bit of a correction, even though those are basic good positions to hold if you held them. And I'm thinking, you know, you don't really want to sell when it's high and you don't want to sell when it's low. But, you know, if you're selling when it's high and it's going to go dropping more, that's when you ought to get rid of it. If you're selling it when it's low, but it's going to continue to drop, you, you really should get rid of it. So that's what I'm thinking the direction of the market is today. This, this happened last night due to, um, you know, all this news about the euro. Now, there's something coming up about, um, you know, talking more about a disorderly Greek default, you know, and maybe around maybe that March 23rd date is something beyond the rumor you know maybe it's uh factual who knows I know when FDIC closes a bank um, they will do it on Friday at midnight so it doesn't or way after hours or whatever it is so they don't affect the markets so nobody knows it's a big 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 secret but you know what gets me is how come my secrets out on the internet? Um, I want to digress a little bit about Lindsay Williams again, but an observation. And, you know, because people want to know what the inside information is. And, you know, this was about BP. And I remember he was being told at that time, um, you know, this was an accident and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, I felt he was being lied to at that time because I think. There was a White House spokesman or something at the time that said uh, when they had the oil spill, it was also, you know, we knew Goldman knew about it, right? So, you know, and there was so many stupid things done. I'm thinking, how the hell could that have been an accident? But, you know, uh, there was also the, the thing with the policy change, right? The policy change. The policy change was to be for cap and trade and to push some of the things about you know sustainability and stuff but you know what this chart is actually shows two wells and you know when Matt Simmons was talking about all this stuff you know first people were thinking hey he's in a council on foreign relations and all this stuff you know and this is the public document initial exploration plan Mississippi Canyon block 252 OCSG 32305 public information okay so these two wells were drilled like um, a couple months away from each other. It's, they're very close. That's why you saw all this oil leaking and stuff. They were showing, like Matt was saying, they were showing the risers. The riser. Now I'm going to tell you what I real. I want to digress on this because I want to show you how this garbage works with these inside information stuff. Because I'm using my analysis from now on. Um, Matt was shut up. I 
go along with that. I mean, he, yeah, I think he was killed. Matt Simmons, Matt Simmons, I think, was killed for telling the truth. But you know what? That's kind of what happens. You know, and you got Alex Jones on there and all this garbage, right? Um, I think that when they shut this well off, they probably nuked it because it was done within the day when all the ships were gone, when the, uh, what do you call it, the, um, there was a storm going on, so they had to pull all the ships out of there, and they were talking about nuking this thing. They probably did do that, but didn't tell the public. But, you know, I really studied hard how the public reacts to this stuff. It's like the guys in control or the guys that are in power do not want the public roused up too, too much. But, damn, the public is basically pretty stupid. Because, man, they had some crazy things about here about aliens down in the deep and uh, uh, metals turning into gold and morphing into different things and eating up things by themselves. The wackiest crap in the world. No. Usually when something happens, and even say this was a setup, say it was not an accident, say it was a setup, assume that, right? A few people get different things out of it. So let's compare this to the euro, you know. I think what's going to happen is the euro is going to survive. They need various things to create havoc and drama. The earth is going to fall down and stuff because that will cause the nations to work together. And it will be stricter and tighter centralized controls that are put on all the individual nations. Work together or you don't survive. That is the game that's going on in here, I think. I think the euro is going to survive, but the commodities are going to take another hit. And I wish I knew this news ahead of time, because if you know the news ahead of time, you know, well, I guess it's insider trading, right? You would never hardly lose. So I'm getting the hell out of this junk, because I think I can get on it back cheaper. Now, I want to digress a little bit about this Putin guy. I got the sound off. He got, it's going to show his picture, right? Here's Putin, he, and here's this other guy who's even worse. You know, Vladimir, what the hell is his name? Zirinovsky, right? The guy that wants to blow up the West, you know, publicly states this. You know, I'm going to say, I don't know what the hell was, was said in this damn thing with Russia today. But, you know, it seems like the American Westerner loves it, you know. They're going against the West. <laughs> I got news for you. These guys are worst. They're worst. They are worst. Get it through your heads. They're worst. You people are not going to get it in your heads because you're thinking this is great. And I'm thinking to myself, God, I know the elite on our side are not that great. These guys are worst. Believe me. So, and uh, I want to point out again about this AGQ and SOV. Now, I'm holding AGQ. I'm getting rid of Sprott. You know, I know silver's probably going to go down and all this stuff like that. But let me just point this out again. Here's SLV in the uh, red, right, in a red line. <laughs> in a red, yeah, it's probably in a red now, too. This is the red line in the SLV, right? Uh, AGQ is the blue line, okay? Let's start out from, eh, what is this, December 5th, right? Say they're even, you know just a zero point well you had opportunities you know even though AGQ got hammered here you had opportunities here to dump it to dump it and when it gets ahead dump it dump it dump it dump it and that's what you got to do but you even held this thing for all this time these three months they're even you know they're even big deal they're about they're about even in gains so <clears throat> it's not that bad to hold AGQ even if you look and you get hammered here, right? Because it, it catches up faster. And actually, <clears throat> if you catch this fund down here, it'll do a hell of a lot better than PSLV. But, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Now, this is USLV, right? <clears throat> what happened during the same time period? You actually had a loss over SLV, over AGQ. You had a, you had a loss over... AGQ and actually for SLV you probably even though it's triple leverage and silver went up a couple bucks over that period you're probably 
I don't know, about even with SOB. About even with it. Or probably you're below it, actually. Excuse me. You're below it. Because you're below AGQ, and during the same period of time, these were even for SOV and AGQ. There you go. SOV is actually, um, would be doing better during this time period than USLV. So, <clears throat> that's the danger of this triple leverage. You know, you can kind of hold this double leverage quite a while, as long as you think you're in a basic bull market. And even though you can be getting hammered here, it can make up for lost time than just holding plain old silver well I know SOV is electronic but you know what I mean and you know when you got coins you buy the coins at a premium and you sell them you know if you're lucky really lucky you get spot but you really don't pay spot and you know you got to drive to the place do all this garbage and stuff like that and that costs money too there's a transaction cost right there too I like the coins I got the coins but um <clears throat> these electronic markets aren't totally as evil as what's going on. It's just that um, for now, it looks like we're going to be getting hit with this downturn correction period that Mark Farber was kind of warning about in gold and stuff. So when you start seeing this, and you know, when they start breaking through these technical support lines, you know what happens. It starts getting shorted. So, I don't know, maybe I'll short it. <laughs> But I'm getting the heck out of like uh, silver, copper, and palladium for now. Even though I should have got out of it yesterday, I got to look at this market news, and I think this news is strong enough that the direction is still going to be more downward. And it's they are going to fly this year because I think there's going to be this conflict with Iran, and with this news that's out today <clears throat> about the eurozone industrial stuff and everything. An economy going down, they're gonna have to do more money printing. So, you know, this daily news today is gonna change, but I think for today the direction of the market is downward, it's gonna be downward for a little longer. <clears throat>